When you're working with the timeline inside of Photoshop CS6, you have several different options available for those different timeline layers. Let me just show you that. I have a blank file open right now. There you go, blank file. I have the timeline open, and that's from the window menu, timeline right there. And let's make a new timeline. Now notice that it gives me a timeline here for audio track and layer zero. Layer zero is the only layer available at this point right there. That's just the default layer. Now if you click on this little arrow, we get the options. And you can see here we have position, opacity, and style. I'm now going to put in a few more things in here, a few more layers, and we'll see what's available on those layers. We'll start off here with a vector graphic. I'll do a rounded rectangle. Just drop that on. And that creates a new layer, as you can see, for that vector graphic. Let's do another one here. Let's come in here and put in some text. There we are. That gives me a text layer right there. And let's put in something else. I'm just going to place a graphic in here, an image, just a photograph, just like that. And place. So there's a photograph. That's a, a raster graphic. So we have a text-based layer, a vector graphic layer, and a raster graphic layer. And there we can see them right there. Let's see what we have on those. First, the raster graphic layer up here, we have position, opacity, and style, just like we had on our initial layer zero. If we look at our text, you'll see we have transform, opacity, style, and text warp, because of course you can warp text. Notice that we have transform instead of position on the text layer. And let's just minimize that. And then run a rectangle is the same thing as the raster graphic layer. If I come down, but we have a little bit more here, a couple of vector things, because of course it is a vector layer. So we have vector mask position and vector mask enable as well. Now, you can change the position option up here on the raster graphic and vector graphic layers. All you need to do is convert the layer into a smart layer. Let me just demonstrate that. Get this over out of the way. Let's grab this raster graphic layer here. I'll pull that down and make a copy of that new layer. There we go. So you can see there's our copy layer right there. And right now it's saying position, opacity, and style. Let's just right click on that layer. And we're going to convert that to a smart object from the right click menu. There we go. You can see there's the smart object icon. And that layer is now a smart object layer. So let's take a look at that. And you'll see now that the position option has been converted or, or changed to the transform option. This actually is more useful because you can do a lot more with the transform than you can position. And of course you can change position with the transform options. You don't lose anything, but you gain a lot of ability. So my recommendation is when you're working with layers inside of the timeline, do all of your fancy work on your image on the layer in whatever mode you need to have that in. And then once you're finished doing that, once the image is the way you want it for that layer, then convert that layer into a smart object. And that will give you the transform option, which gives you the greatest number of options for modifying that in the timeline. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.